Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Lord Forwent. I am here in Europa Universalis 4, but I'm not actually going to play the game. Um, instead, I'm going to go over some basic uh, explanations of why you pick different strategies for different nations. I'll probably dive into a nation. I'm thinking either France or the Ottomans and run through some of the basic numbers and, more importantly, some of the basic ways to enhance those numbers. So, um, let's pick a nation. Let's go with France here. So, I'm not going to go into basic stuff like monarch points. If you don't know that, you should play the tutorials or watch other videos. But, if we look at the French ideas, they, the French tradition specifically, they start with an additional bonus manpower modifier and diplomatic reputation. So, diplomatic reputation obviously makes deals, you're more likely to make deals, get alliances, get vassals, and annex vassals faster. But the national manpower modifier is not one of those obvious numbers that when you play a game you're like, oh, I need national manpower. Um, but it does give you a larger pool of manpower to draw from, making France, basically at the beginning, I believe France has the only is the only large nation with a national manpower modifier. Could be wrong on that. But that means France is going to get 20% more troops from the land they already hold, and seeing as, if we look at the development over here, France is the largest one in Europe, although the Ottomans will overtake that shortly. Um, an additional 20% troops on already one of the strongest developed nations is amazingly strong. The only other ones that are close are the Timurids and the Ming, who of course are going to collapse both of them given time. Um, moving on with the French ideas, um, diplomatic relations is very self-explanatory. You can have more alliances. Considering France starts out surrounded by usually at least two, if not all three of their rivals are usually right on their doorstep. England's almost guaranteed to be a rival. Um, Burgundy usually is one. Um, and usually Austria is one because they're a historical enemy modifier, assuming you start at 1444 here. Um, then there's the big one that makes France very powerful, Elan. Increased morale of armies by 20%. So a lot of nations start off with a morale bonus. Castile starts off with one under their traditions of 15. Austria starts off with 10. Burgundy has 10 as well. So that actually means at this point in time, both Burgundy, and Castile, and Austria are going to have better troops than France at the beginning of the game. But France has 20% more manpower, so they can afford to lose those battles. However, once France gets Elan, especially if one was to go down the defensive tree, which the second idea gives 15% extra morale, so if they go down that, get three, then they'll get... Well, actually, they have to go down six of down an idea tree. But anyway, they get it. They now have 35 bonus morale, let alone any prestige uh, defender of the faith, which France can easily afford. Um, France can all of a sudden start having armies that have like 45 plus extra morale, where the closest you can get to keep up with that is really like Spain 15 plus the 15 from defensive ideas, and you're getting 30, maybe 40. Uh, I'm, I'm excluding the um, policies that you can take out if you complete idea groups, just because usually you don't hit those to late, late game, at which point it doesn't matter a lot. Um, France's next modifier is a 10% tax modifier. It's not the best, um, but I don't think any nation has above 10%. Oh, actually, I'm wrong. England has at least 15 uh, yeah, but the average is about 10%. The Ottomans have it here, too. And it just gives you 10% more income from those provinces, tax income. Uh, it's pretty good, but you can get the same benefit from going down the first of the economic ideas. However, if you're France and you take economic ideas, rather than 10% extra tax income, now you have 20% tax income. So that can, as you can see, if you have a large nation or you have nations that have a high development, which France definitely does, specifically high base tax, you can really start to leverage that to make a lot of money. Um, then they have trading principles. I kind of ignore this one, just makes it less likely you're going to have um, 
if you colonize, more less likely natives are going to rise up against you. Um, if you take the native trading one, I believe this will combine with it and give you no chance of a native uprising. So actually trading, the trading with natives as France actually can be worth it, unlike most nations where you either want to be very pacifist or very aggressive when you're colonizing. Uh, the next French idea, uh, uh, negative fort maintenance. Now, this also can combine with defensive ideas. So right here we've got at least two ideas that combine with the defensive idea tree, uh, negative fort maintenance and bonus morale, which when you get ideas, idea group that stacks with two of your national ideas, that's usually a tree you want to go down in the game. So for example, if you're England, and you look at it, they got bonus morale of navies, embargo efficiency, heavy ship combat, navy tradition, and navy sailor recovery speed, which would imply taking the naval ideas as England is a very strong idea. Um, jumping to Portugal, which I know very well, Portugal gets trade efficiency, trade range, goods produced, which helps for trade, bonus global trade power, an extra merchant, and trade efficiency. All of those you can get um, doubling or tripling the bonus if you go down the, the trade ideas tree. So those that can be very useful in the long run as well. However, since Portugal has so many of them, you, in fact, you could neglect going down those trees and still keep up with people in trade groups. Uh, um, income from trade to the trade group. But on the other hand, it doesn't necessarily mean that doubling down on it is not a bad idea. I mean, if Portugal doubles down on it, they will get more trade from the Seville trade no Sevilla trade node than Spain will, even though they have what less than a third of the provinces Spain does. Well, once Spain gets Aragon and Granada, they get half the development, but they'll get more trade. So that trade ideas are good on Portugal, but also Portugal, since they get colonial range, same thing with uh, Spain, an extra colonist, doubling down into exploration or expansion ideas is very good for them. Jumping back to France, though, uh, France also gets 10% 10 10 cheaper technologies, which since the time you get that, you're already to late game. It's not a huge bonus. Although it will allow you to spend more at, um, monarch points on development and coring lands and still keep up with in tech. Or if you stay small and compact as France, which you really never should, because France's early game ideas, manpower, relations, morale, they're all bent around conquering things. Um, it would allow you to keep up in tech. But if you stay small, it will allow you to get a tech lead, although about a year. So a uh, year tech lead is pretty good if you want to stay ahead of time in tech. The last French idea, um, liberty, egality, fraternity. <clears throat> Sorry, dry throat all of a sudden. Um, is very good because it allows France to deal with um, Protestant and reform Reformed rebels, or if they go to Protestant or Reformed, uh, tolerate the Catholics in their realm without having revolts, which pretty much the reason you would go down the humanist tree of any nation is to stabilize your country due to uh, religious unrest, in which case, since France gets plus two tolerance of he heretics and heathens, then they don't really need to do that. The last of the French ideas is discipline, which, again, is just to strengthen the French war machine. So if you look at it this way, they have national manpower, discipline, negative fort maintenance, and morale of armies, all of which, if you take them together, that's about four, uh, four military ideas, which means France is based around a very militarized strategy. If you jump over to Portugal here, they don't have any morale bonuses at all. In fact, the only thing they really have that could actually be of any use in a war is the National Sailors Modifier, which is close to the same as the National Manpower, but obviously for ships. So this means Portugal is not going to become a world conqueror on the scale of France, unless they just invest constantly in military ideas, but even still they'd be behind France, which means the, they're more shaped to colonize, explore, and trade with their ideas. England, obviously, I looked at them briefly. They've got 
a lot of bonuses not only towards trade but ships, which means England's more bent around naval combat, using your ships to win wars, preventing armies from sailing to other continents and reinforcing things. Um, Austria, on the other hand, I'm sure people have checked out Austria. They're very fun to play. They're all they're pretty much around being diplomatic. I mean, they do have morale of armies and discipline. Reinforce speed is useful, but not the big benefit from that idea. But by and large, with the relations over time, diplomatic annexation cost reduction, imperial authority, diplomatic reputation, and diplomatic relations, Austria is bent around a diplomatic game where when you could go down both diplomacy or influence ideas. Uh, on the other hand, you've got a nation like the Ottomans, who they also have the Janissaries, which I won't go into, but their ideas are pretty much based around having just a massive, well-trained army and using a large empire to get even stronger. Land force limit modifier, you only get that on nations who are supposed to have massive armies late game. Not to mention, core creation cost is probably the most broken thing in the game. Especially if you stack that with it, um, uh, not expansion, um, I'm forgetting, it's the one on the bottom left above humanist ideas for the admin ideas. And uh, it's very useful. I can mean the Ottomans can get a territory and spend only 35% of what other nations would to core it. Um, if we jump up here to Muscovoy, they also have a land force limit modifier. Whenever you see that, you know that country is supposed to have a large army. Now, what I usually find with Muscovoy, though, is they have all these great ideas to give them more military troops, lots of military troops, but they don't really have the money or the lowered maintenance to hold a full-sized army, which means this Muscovoy doubling down into like defensive or um, quantity ideas is actually a bad thing because you won't be able to support your own armies. I mean, unless you're massive, at which point you shouldn't really need um, to worry about how much manpower you have. So actually, Muscovo is an exception to the rule where going into quantity ideas or something is a great idea. True defensive still has good benefits for them because of the Russian winter stuff. But overall, that's a country where defensive ideas are not useful. Um, if we jump over here to the Ming, the Ming are interesting because the Ming are pretty well based around early game. You want to go defensive ideas if you're worried about wars. With cheaper fort maintenance, cheaper ideas cost, larger garrison size, and fort defense, and discipline. This means the Ming are going to have a very defensive army and hard to siege forts. The, the Ming having the negative 10 idea cost means as the Ming, it's usually worth, as soon as you get to an admin tech that unlocks an idea group, to race down that idea group before trying to get ahead in tech. Because the 10% um, the cheaper cost means most ideas are only, what is it, three, uh, 360 rather than 400 base cost. And if you start to, if you go down the tree, obviously, as you go further down the idea tree, it decreases the tech costs. So it's usually worth it as the Ming to try and complete your idea trees and still be able to expand. However, if you look at the Ming, they don't, except for this one trade efficiency idea, they don't have much else to give you um, an incentive to really expand outside your borders. They don't have any core costs. They really don't have any strong army bonuses. 5% discipline, fire, that's good, but it's not conquer the world that the French the Russians or the Ottomans or even Poland has which means the Ming are pretty much a self-sufficient nation which they are even though it's horribly inefficient for ages so you can almost you can stay as a great power and probably one of the stronger ones as the Ming without ever having to conquer an ounce of land um, stepping down here to the Malaysian nations or whatever they are if you take one like the Malayan Sultanate ideas, you've got cheaper ships, better trade steering, and merchants, which you know would suggest that going trade is pretty good. They also have tolerance of heathens. Well, that's mainly because they have a lot of Sunni, Buddhist, Hindus, animists in the area. It means you can safely expand in this area without having a ton of rebellions. 
production efficiency, idea costs, naval maintenance, prestige, and colonists. Now if you look at these, you'd say, okay, let's build a massive trading nation with ships. You'd be partially right. They get a lot of trade. However, if they can conquer all this region, they don't really need to go further down the trade ideas. Because if you look at the trade map, only a very small part of the world's trade will actually flow through Malacca. And once the Europeans get here, they'll just drain all the trade out of it. But you're still going to get a majority of the trade staying in Malacca. In fact, for um, nations in this area, it's almost more beneficial to stay with um, going just to have a large, cheaply maintained navy in case the Europeans come to conquer you. So they're not really based off land war. In fact, they're, one of their biggest threats I've ever seen is when Iotha, Chimer, or any of these nations invade them because they have no, if you look at it, no strength for land combat. I don't think actually any of these have land strength. Well, sorry, not land strength. Okay, here we are. Kutai actually has a national manpower modifier. That's pretty much the only one in the area where you're going to want to fight a land war. So, if you're playing one of these nations, it's all about the navy. Something about trade, but the navy is your core strength, which means unless you're willing to invest heavily in uh, land-based combat ideas, trying to expand into land is going to be virtually impossible. But defending islands, pretty doable. If you jump over to, actually, here we are, to Japan. Japan's another nation that's, again, straight down the world conquest with a huge discipline bonus, infantry combat, manpower modifier. They almost have the same bonuses, with the exception of morale, that a nation like France does. In fact, their whole thing is large infantry armies that can crush everything. That also can be based around the fact that they also have uh, domestic trade power, meaning they're not going to try and expand at way out here to get trade into colonizing. In fact, that would be a good move because there's really no trade nodes that flow into Nippon over here. So that would be an example of a nation where trying to stay internal with fort defense, legitimacy, chance of new air, tax modifiers, trade modifiers, Another one of the Asian nations that's pretty self-sufficient. Korea's got several of the same bonuses. Obviously, it's Korea, though, you want to expand. Japan, you want to annex things. Looking at Japan, they have a lot of vassals. You'd say, well, why shouldn't you go down diplomatic ideas to annex them? Uh, not a huge issue because of the shogunate that gives them extra diplomatic relations. Japan can easily maintain this, their shoguns without having any issues or their daimyo, sorry, Japan is the shogun. Um, if we go into some of these nations down here, into the African nations, remember what I was saying about nations that are meant to conquer things? You're not going to find any immense warmonger nation strengths out here. You've got unrest, legitimacy, stability, some morale, development, production, attrition, and diplomatic reputation. So Looking at this, this is not a country, Luba here, it's not meant to conquer the world, but they'll not do a bad job at defending themselves. They're more along the lines of improving and maintaining what land they have, with a stability modifier, an unrest modifier, a development, a production, and a nutrition. So they're not another world conqueror. You can take them to conquer the world, but if you're going to go down conquest, if you're going to go for a route of conquest, you have to change what idea groups you take. I'll probably stick that in another video of which ones to take. An exception to the conquering lands in this area would be Songhai. Songhai is a bit of a deceptive nation here, if you look at it. They have infantry combat in yearly army tradition and discipline. And they also have a morale one over here. And although those are good ideas, they're not amazing like France or the other world mongers. However, one has to realize they're a lot stronger than any of the other nations in the area's early game um, military ideas, which means the Songhai's job is to conquer things early on. Another thing that enters into the Songhai, which is not obvious, but I'm only going to do it on the Songhai just to know, just to point out what you should look for. 
The Songhai start out as a Sunni nation, Sunni Muslim nation up here. All of this is animist. I anim, an, oh, fetishist now was animist. Fetishist ideas, which are of a different religion, which means if you once started the religious idea group, you'd get a religious Kazai Bell on all of their land. Um, I'll go into that at a different point, why you would use a different tree for a different reason. But that would be an example of a nation where early on you're meant to conquer things. Actually, all three of their military ideas come in the first three ideas. Well, national idea areas. So if you double down into like defensive ideas for Songhai, you'll have the strongest army in the area, hands down. And you may not have the largest, but you'll have one of the strongest ones. Same thing with if you double down into defensive ideas as France, you're going to have a really strong military. Now, if you do double down as France into defensive ideas, I'm sticking with France because it's a commonly played nation, you're not going to have any ideas that are going to help you expand other than uh, they'll help you win wars but not take a lot of lands. Um, the Ottomans, on the other hand, have this core creation cost, which makes it a lot easier for them to absorb land. So the irony is France is meant to have a powerful army but not actually conquer a lot of land. Obviously, Portugal, Castile, and England, a lot of their stuff is around colonizing, so they get the land without having to pay core costs. But if you're looking at Castile and you're saying, oh, I, I can easily conquer these little Muslim nations, you've got to stop and look again, because if you go into Morocco, they have a hostile core creation cost, which means coring those lands are 50% more expensive than they would if you instead went into Europe. That trying to discourage you from actually invading and conquering these nations. It's still possible, but it's expensive. Another example would be Wallawachi over here, another 50% core creation cost. Another incentive for you know not, you not to just waltz and take all their lands in a war and say, oh, this is great land, I'm going to take it. No, it suddenly becomes immensely expensive and slows you down whole tech levels. There are ways around that, but that's more into the idea groups. Um, the same thing also occurs over here in Italy, although it occurs, whoops, where is the good Italian one? Oh, it doesn't occur till midway through it. So, I mean, early on Italy, you can conquer it. Late game, you can conquer it fairly easily, but mid game, it suddenly becomes a lot more expensive invading Italy. Um, a lot of the ideas, idea groups outside of Europe are significantly weaker in terms of combat. So, in fact, if you're outside of Europe, going down the military idea trees are much, give you a much larger benefit than the Europeans, because the Europeans have a lot of those built into the nations. Even Hungary here, who tends to get stomped by the Ottomans, has a couple pretty good military ideas. But if you look out here in Malwa or something, you're not going to see that level of army bonuses ever again. So if you're going to want to try and conquer the world, Playing as a tiny nation like Assam over here is not going to be to your benefit. You can do it. You could definitely do it. But you're not going to have an, as easy of a time as you were if you would started something like France. Um, so these are just things you got to look at when you start a nation. You really got to go down their ideas and start to think about why do they have what ideas do they have. They have. And why are those ideas specifically picked for those nations? Um, because it can really shape your gameplay. Obviously, I'll go into a bit more when I talk about idea groups and which ones are good to pick and how they affect your numbers. But the ideas matter. National ideas matter a lot for your nation. You can, If you're good enough, you can do anything you want with a nation, but certain actions are always going to be easier. And if you're learning the game, one of the first things you really have to master is looking down ideas and saying, okay, what is this nation's strength? If you look at Poland here, pretty basic nation, right? Clearly a military nation, but if you look closer, 10% cheaper cavalry, bonus morale, oh wait, cavalry combat ability plus 33%. That means Poland's big strength is cavalry. So anything that you can do to enhance your cavalry is going to massively make you stronger as Poland. That's an example. Sweden has infantry strength. So does Japan. Those are ones to consider looking at and 
shaping your play style around them. If you don't like a lot of cavalry, don't use them. If you play as a a um, step stepping nomad, step nomads, you've got another com cavalry combat ability. So really shapes what you want to do. Conquest nations are very rare to find, but nations that can en enhance what lands they start with, pretty common. Pretty common if you look around. So I'm going to do a video following this one talking about the different idea trees and why you'd pick one over the other. I'll see you guys all next time then. Bye for now.